Hello, White Sox fans and sports fans out there. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and today I'm going to give you some White Sox news and an update on what happened in the Kansas City Royals series. <laughs> Well, hello, it's me, Sports Manzi, and I'm back. And you know what this is? If I can get it all in the frame, I can't, really. It doesn't seem like I can. There you go. You know what that is? That's a broom. And that's what the White Sox broke out against Kansas City. Yeah. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. See this? This is my <laughs> As we swept the Kansas City Royals, three games and three games set. And now, what that means is that the White Sox are now five and four on the year. Time to pay the fiddler. So I'll go over everything that's happened in the last few days. Um, the first thing is that um, Nick Madrigal was activated prior to the Kansas City series, and he did play quite a bit in that series as well. Now, in first in the first game, the first game matchup was uh, Keuchel against Bubich, the 22-year-old out of Stanford University, and uh, that game. Uh, basically, we hung on barely to win that game as uh, Engel had a three-run home run in the second that gave the White Sox a 3 nothing lead. And I believe we ended up winning the game 3-2. Uh, to two. So that was a good way to start the uh, series. Um, however, uh, Anderson, T.A., Timmy Anderson, did leave the game because of a... Uh, I believe it was a groin, a groin strain, um, and of course he had a misplay, um, what I would call a misplay. It wasn't. I think they listed it as a hit, but he was there. He could have made the play, and he didn't. So we may miss uh, Anderson's bat for a little while, but we are not going to miss his defense. I, I think that's that's pretty apparent. Um, so anyway, uh, the the Royals in that in that first game stranded nine base runners, and Mikhail Franco stranded seven of them just by himself. So that was that was a great effort there by uh, Franco. We appreciate it. And uh, so let's see here. So Ricky, yeah, he brought in the pinch hitter, so uh, which was uh, which was. Um, Lurie Garcia, who finished out that game at shortstop for Anderson. Um, and uh, so Keuchel went five and a third in that game. He came out after five and a third. And Bubich only lasted four. Um, but the, the bullpen, again, was quite stellar. I gotta say. That was, that was for sure. And... Uh, Keuchel got the win, and Colome got the save in that game, in that first game. Game two, we just uh, really, we kind of really just cruised to victory. I mean, the final score was 11-5, to but the White Sox were hitting everything. They had like 22 hits in that game. Um, and uh, let's see here. Read off what we've got here. Um, Roberts was 4 for 6 with two RBIs in, the ga in that game. Moncada was three for five. Grandal was two for five with two RBIs. Jimenez was four for six with four RBIs. Nice game for Jimenez. And Garcia was even four for five with an RBI. And uh, Gio, uh, that game was uh, Gio Gonzalez versus Balanos. And uh, Gio only went three and two thirds. Um, 
Gave up five hits and nowhere in runs. Probably only went three and two-thirds in the game, I'm guessing, because he had had some relief appearances fairly recently. So we'll uh, we'll cut some slack there for Ricky, but uh, because he had no earned runs, although five hits over three and two-thirds, he, he may not have had his good stuff either. Hard to tell, but we won. We scored a lot of runs. And then talking about scoring a lot of runs, we did that in game three, too. We ended up winning that game by the score of 9-2. to two. And uh, Nick Madrigal came into this game 0 for 9 to start his young career. But then he went 4 for 5. So um, that was a huge day for uh, Nicky, for Nick Madrigal. And uh, glad to see it. And, you know, a big hit that happened was by another Nick, Nick Delmonico, had a huge hit in the, I believe it was in the uh, seventh, yes, in the top of the seventh, uh, with the White Sox only ahead four to two and the bases loaded. Um, you know, four to two, you're, you're ahead and you're thinking, okay, you know, if the bullpen shuts everything down from here on out, we're great. But. Um, Delmonico actually got a base hit and drove in two more runs and uh, really kind of, you know, put it to where you were you were feeling like. I mean, it was six to two then. And you were feeling like, okay, now I think it's very likely we're going to win this game with no problem. Also, before the game, the White Sox put uh, Kelvin Herrera on waivers. So uh, it looks like Kelvin Herrera's time in Chicago is going to be done. Um, he His fastball velocity was down, and uh, the White Sox probably felt it's, uh, you know, it's time to bid adieu to him. So we'll see if he catches on with anybody else. But yeah, he's gone. And another person who got their Major League debut in this game was Yerman Mercedes, and he grounded out to second base after working, I believe, a 3-2 count. But uh, finally got out. But hey, the important thing is that we won that game. And the it's, it's interesting to note that the last sweep that the White Sox had of Kansas City in Kauffman Stadium was in September of 2015. And so we just did it again. Break out the broom. So anyway, yeah. So the White Sox are off to, now they're off to a pretty good start. It was a little dicey there when, after the uh, Cleveland series and they had played the Twins for three and Cleveland for three. But now it's looking a lot better. Um, and I'm a lot more confident uh, that the team is starting to come together. The hitting is starting to come up. Let's just hope that the season lasts because we're having a lot of teams with the, you know, with diagnosed with the, uh, with the thing that's going around. So the Cardinals have had a few guys diagnosed with it. Um, a few yesterday and then a few more today. Um, and the Marlins, of course, and the Phillies. So hopefully they can hold it together. I think if maybe one more team comes up with it, though, that's going to probably spell doom for the for the season because I don't see how they can make up that many games by that many teams within the short window that they have to finish the season in. But hopefully they can figure out a way because the White Sox are off to an exciting start and it would be great to see them finish this season out with the way that they're playing. And oh, by the way, Ross Detweiler has now pitched seven innings on the season and only given up one hit and no earned runs. So, um, and the first base runner he allowed was in game three of this series. It was, uh, and that was on a single. So I think that's the only base runner he's allowed so far. So, you know, even when Ross Detweiler's having a good year, you want to see everything played out. So, some exciting stuff. The next uh, series we have is uh, against Milwaukee. That's going to be four games. It's going to be a home and home. We go to Milwaukee and play them in Miller Park for two. And then we will go back to um, U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago and play the other two. So 
Um, it would be great to sweep them too, by the way. But that you know, Milwaukee's a good team. They're probably better than Kansas City. So, um, but we will see. But for right now, you know, leave a comment. You know, share this with other White Sox fans. But right now, that's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.